Get ready to learn a lesson from McGuire, Griffey, Ripken, and more. Major League Baseball is proud to introduce Hitters on Hitting, Finding the Sweet Spot. Some of baseball's all-time heaviest hitters reveal the inside secrets of their swing with exclusive interviews and footage not available anywhere else. The interactive DVD includes over 50 minutes of bonus material that USA Today calls pure perfection. Hitters on Hitting is available now wherever videos and DVDs are sold. Tell me not in mournful numbers. Life is but an empty dream. For the soul is dead that slumbers, and things are not what they seem. Lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime. And a parting leave behind us footprints on the sands of time, still achieving still pursuing, learn to labor and to wait. Know how sublime a thing it is to suffer and be strong, for time will teach thee soon the truth. There are no birds in last year's nest. The 1991 World Series featuring the Atlanta Braves and the Minnesota Twins. Imagine two last place teams from 1990 in the World Series one year later. It had never before happened to one team, much less two. But as baseball looked out on the 1991 World Series, there they were the teams of Bobby Cox and Tom Kelly. Not one, but two Cinderella stories. There was Lonnie Smith, the veteran, incredibly playing in his fourth World Series with his fourth different team. In contrast, Chuck Knobloch, the Twins' rookie second baseman. Here he was, caught up in the biggest show in baseball in this, his first full season, playing before his brothers and sisters, his mom and his dad. Before game one, in a truly fitting gesture, the first pitch was thrown out by Steve Palermo, the courageous American League umpire who was shot and disabled in July while coming to the aid of a robbery victim. The affection for Palermo from both players and his brethren, at once genuine and touching. There was more goodwill for the twin starting pitcher, Jack Morris, 
a former Tiger who this season came home to roost. Jack Morris grew up in Highland Park near here, watching Jim Cobb, Mudcat Grant, Bob Allison, and Harmon Killebrew play for the Twins, and he dreamed of doing the same. Well, Morris also had a dream first inning in game one. Three up, three down. Opposing Morris in this first game was the crafty 12-year veteran Charlie Liebrandt, the only brave starter with World Series experience. And one of his first tasks, quite appropriately, would be to face a man in the midst of his postseason baptism. Chuck's sisters weren't just satisfied with a single. There goes the runner. A strikeout and a runner down to second base with two out. Knoblock was left stranded at second as both Lee Brandt and Morris looked strong the first two innings. But in the third, with two men out, Dan Gladden, the Twins' left fielder, walked and stole second. And Knobloch got another chance to do his family proud. Dad, Dad says he's toughest when he's got two strikes on him. Lee Brandt ahead on the count. Knobloch gets a hit. they got to play at the plate. one nothing Minnesota. Is tagged out. It's something that a play that he likes to do, you know, especially with two outs. Now, one out, I might not have done it, but uh, with two outs, you know, if I can get in scoring position uh, right away and uh, make them cut the ball like he did, then that assures us of a run. So, um, from the twin standpoint and from my standpoint, and especially from TK's, that was a good play. He was hoping that I was going to do that. Thanks to Knobloch, the twins had that all important first run and threatened to make some more noise in the fifth. Following a double by Kent Herbeck, Scott Leyes lined a single to put runners on the corners with nobody out. In this precarious situation, the Braves' only solace was in knowing that the batter was a light-hitting Greg Gagne. Certainly not a home run threat, and certainly not thinking that way. We'll try to, you know, be a hero or anything, just try to hit the ball in between first and second. And uh, wasn't really thinking, you know, I want the fastball and just the break and stuff, but uh, I just reacted to the pitch that was in, and I ended up hitting out of the park. Pretty well hit. This ball is going to go. The Twins now led 4-0, but the inning wasn't over. And with Jim Clancy now on the mound, they loaded him up. Now we have Gladden at third, now Block at second base, Chili Davis at first, and Brian Harper up in the left field. And Hunter with an excellent play. A late tag by the runner, and he is... And the inning as Olsen held the ball. So we end up with a three-run fifth for Minnesota. The first in a series filled with plays at the plate had failed for Minnesota. But they were now leading 4-0. And Morris appeared in total command. But in the sixth, the Braves began to feel their own. First, the Jeff Treadway single. Then, a shot up the middle by Dave Justice. And with runners now on second and first, the Braves had a legitimate threat with Ron Gant at the plate. And that ball is a 
base hit and pass Gladden and Atlanta gets a run. Just like that, the Braves had brought the tying run to the plate. for two, twice flying to left. We could make it a one-run game or tie it. A Kent Herbeck home run in the sixth gave the Twins a 5-1 lead. And as the game now moved into the eighth, a precautionary call went out to the bullpen in the event that Morris was beginning to tire. After all, the Twins' pen had not allowed an earned run in the championship series. And when Morris walked his first two batters, it was time for the hometown fans to pay homage to their hometown hero. But with two men on and nobody out, the Braves still held the card. They trailed by four, but had the dangerous Terry Pendleton to play. It was a most crucial situation for Mark Guthrie. And it was time for our old friend Knobloch to re-enter the picture. Braves trailing five to one, and a hard hit ball to Knobloch. They get one, two. The Braves did score a run in the inning, but it could have been much worse for the Twins. And with a 5-2 lead in the ninth, Minnesota felt quite secure in having Rick Aguilera on the mound. He of 42 saves during the regular season. That ball into left for Glenn. The Twins have won the first game, five to two. The Twins had gained the edge, thanks in part to a rookie who rose to the occasion in his first World Series game. Where's that picture from? You don't remember taking it? Congratulations. Good game. Tomorrow's a new day. I'll see you guys later. All right, way to go. A new cast of characters took center stage for game two. 16 game winner Kevin Tappany would start for the Twins. And Tom Glavin, one of the two 20 game winners in the National League, was set to go for the Braves. After Atlanta failed in the top of the first, the Twins were recipients of some injustice in the outfield. then saw his pitcher dig an even deeper hole with Knobloch at the plate.
Puckett led all major leaguers in hitting into double play ball 27 times. And that's a lot. Right? Lavin throws a lot of sinkers and a lot of ground balls. He hopes it's at somebody. Runners are going. And a ground ball to Pendleton. Steps on third, bounces it to first, two out. We thought we were out of the inning. Uh, I said, golly, we picked him up real good here. Terry made a great play on a hit and run uh, off of Puckett's bat, and, um, but we forgot about Chili Davis. After a decade in the major leagues, this was the first World Series for Davis. And as he soon discovered, good things come to those who wait. Berserk. I, you know, they knew it was gone. I knew I hit the ball well. I think Gladwin knew I hit it well. And when I got to first base and uh, Brian Hunter ran into the fence and uh, left field and the ball went over the fence, uh, it was so loud in there. I never experienced anything like that. And the curtain call was uh, something I'd never experienced before. It was exceptional. I felt chills going through me. It was just, it was a beautiful feeling. Something you look forward to, you expect in a World Series game. But Tappany gave up a run in the second on a sacrifice fly, and a lonesome battle cry began. And with one out in the third, Lonnie Smith sought to answer the cry with some action. Off the glove of Lance, probably an error, and Lonnie Smith runs the bases with one out. But then came one of the more controversial plays in the entire series. Ron Gant was at the plate, and a single would put the runners at the corners with two men out. Or so it seemed. Smith is going. And a hit to left by Gant. And Lonnie's trying. They're going to get him, perhaps. He's safe. And now Gant gets back to first, and he's out. Jack, it looked like Herbeck pulled him off the bag. I think the Braves have a legitimate complaint right here. That was a close play. Uh, he was safe when he got back to the base, and uh, uh, he would have slid. He would have been safe and stay on the base, and everything would have been fine. But the problem was he didn't slide. He came uh, back in and to first base and uh, ran into me and was falling over, and I uh, kept a tag on him. His momentum carried him off the bag, and I, uh, I ended up with his leg in my arm like uh, everybody's talking like I tried to pull him off the bag, but he was just coming off the bag anyway, so I just kind of more or less caught him coming off the bag. I got there in time to, you know, to stay on the bag and, and to, uh, you know, I was going to be safe, and I was going to plant my uh, my left foot to uh, you know to make sure that I stayed on the bag and by that time Herbeck grabbed my leg and he kind of fell backwards and pulled me with him so um, the umpire was right there and he called me out I couldn't really believe it and uh, I'm sure no one else could but uh, you know he saw it as uh, being out you have to get on the bag and be under control and in my my judgment he was not under control once he got onto the bag everybody watches the feet on the replays but if you watch his upper body He's falling over, and uh, in my judgment, his momentum after he hit the bag carried him on off. The Braves did tie the game with a sacrifice fly in the fifth, and the anticipated pitcher's duel was on. tied at two but in the top of the eighth Atlanta had an opportunity to take the lead with runners on first and third and one out Gant needed only to hit the ball anywhere but straight up pops it up foul and there is a play now with two out 
Justice was looking to atone for his first inning faux pas. Come on, Justice! This is the most noise from this crowd all night. Into left for Gladden. He's right there. Inning's over. What a chance the Braves had, and they let it get away. They have left five, and we're still tied in the bottom of the eighth. Back to Gladden, who earlier had retired 15 twins in a row. But now in the eighth, he was facing the pride of the Maranek, New York, Scott Leyes. Corks one in the left field. Back at the track is Hunter, and it's gone! <laughs> Trailing now 3-2 in the ninth, the Braves were headed for a two games to nothing deficit. Or with Aguilera on the mound, absolutely no one was whistling Dixie. <laughs> the Twins had swept the first two games at home. But the Braves weren't about to concede. So if they're going to win it, they'll have to come back here and do it. I'll tell you that much. Fortunately, we're going home, and uh, you know, it's, it's nice to be here in, in Minnesota, my hometown. But uh, I'm ready to leave. But not even the Braves were prepared for what greeted them in Atlanta, where the long wait for a World Series was over. Everyone, it seemed, was enraptured by the Braves. It's the shopping tour and I hear one. I'm a hawk and I'm sure it's fun. The finishing touches were in place in a city overcome with excitement, which, as game three approached, grew deafening. But not everyone was privy to Southern hospitality. As the fans let Herbeck know, they would have called that play at first quite differently. But they left no doubt about how they felt toward their Braves, especially their newly crowned savior, Steve Avery. And of course, the big question is, can Avery do it again? He won 18 games during the regular season. Then he beat the Pirates. And now, in order for the Braves to be in any sort of a comfortable position, he's going to have to beat these twins. Glenn hits it into right center and Gantz on the move. The ball gets between them. That ball should have been caught. And Gladden's going to end up at third base. They hold him there. Well, that's the way the game started the other evening when the Twins were batting first inning game two. And once again, the Twins capitalized. Three base hit for Gladden is his first hit. And this will put Minnesota on top. Now block sacrifice fly. And it is one to nothing in favor of the visiting Twins. And some people thought that Steve Avery just might shut these Twins down altogether. It was the first run in 16 and a third postseason innings allowed by Avery, but he escaped further damage, and the Braves looked to get even. In the second, twin starter Scott Erickson found himself with two on and two out. Olsen walked. He's at second. Mark Lemke got the first Atlanta hit. He's at first. Breaking ball, base hit. We are tied, and the runners end up at second and third.
And so it remained tied at one apiece into the fourth. When Justice once again got the chance to redeem himself for his first inning miscue and showed that the bat was indeed mightier than the glove. Lonnie Smith's image was further enhanced with one man out, and the base is empty. Around to the top of the batting order, Lonnie Smith has struck out and fouled out to right. Lonnie Smith hits it well. There's another run for Atlanta. The Braves scored still another run in the inning and held a commanding 4-1 lead into the seventh. Avery appeared in complete control, but a chink was etched in his armor by the heretofore silent Kirby Puckett. Hit by Puckett, and that one's carrying a long way, and Mitchell can't do anything about that one. And then makes it 4-2 as Puckett gets his first hit of this World Series. And the Twins fans have an opportunity to root here in the seventh inning. And that's the salute from the Metrodome in Minnesota. But back in Atlanta, there was a bit more trepidation as Minnesota began to call on a bevy of pinch hitters to open the eighth. They couldn't help but see Alejandro Pena up in the bullpen in case Avery further faltered. For now, however, with a 4-2 lead, the game was Avery. And the pinch hitter, Brian Harper. Pendleton scoops it, grabs it, throws it, and safe at first. We'll see how they roll that one, and Harper gets down to first base nonetheless. Because Terry Pendleton is such a good fielder, they're going to give him an error. Sometimes you're penalized by your ability. That brings Bobby Cox out of the dugout. He didn't like the sixth inning or the seventh inning. The puck at home run. Now the error, and he lifts Steve Avery. Alejandro Pena will come in and listen to this crowd. Your attention, please, for Minnesota. 11 for 11 in save opportunities during the season, three saves during the NLCS plus a 2 and 0 record and Chili Davis when they faced each other in the National League was 3 for 10 against Pena. Burn him, Pena. Burn him. Come on. Top of the eighth inning. Tying run at the plate. In the left field. Mitchell back. How far is this going? We are tied on a pinch home run by Chili Davis. An error and a home run and a 4 4 game. But the danger hadn't passed, for with just one out, the Twins put runners on the corner. But Olsen staved off further damage with a scoop. Okay, Pena, smoking now, man. Let's go. Let's go, Pena. In the dirt, and Olsen saved a run. Lucky Greg Olsen's good. Yeah. What will it be? Will Puckett snap the tie? Can Pena get the strikeout or the double play? Got him! Big strikeout, two out. to do his damage. Pena struggling to get out of the eighth. Herbeck running again. And it struck him out. Pena had survived. And though the Braves had squandered the 4-1 lead, they were fortunate to be tied. The tension became unbearable as the game moved into extra innings. 
Then in the 12th, a spark by Gladden. How far are we going to go? Gladden hits it hard to right for his third hit of the evening. Gladden singles with one out here in the 12th. And the Twins would like to snap the tie here in the 12th inning and then get Aguilera on his feet in the bullpen. The batter now block. He drove in a run with a fly ball in the first. And he has a hit one for four. Good hit and run combo up there. Double play ball. Oh, right through Lemke. And it's first and third with only one out for the Twins. And yeah, that's a double play ball that gets you out of the inning. And it looked like what Lemke did, he looked up before he had the ball. Clearly an error. Up next, Kerbeck, followed by Puckett. A breakfast of champions better left untouched. So Atlanta counted with Kent Merka, and an incredible scenario unfolded. And Rick Aguilera of the Twins is now up. Tom Kelly sniffing a lead here. Tell you, we talked earlier about Rick Aguilera and a batter. Wouldn't it be something for Rick Aguilera to pinch hit for Mark Guthrie, who is in the five hole now? Remember. So if they get her back, you might see a walk to Kirby Puckett to load the bases. Even if runners are at first and third, just thinking ahead. Tim McCarver's prescience proved perfect as Merker met Herbeck head on. First and third, the runner going again. Strike three called. And Knobloch steals second. And that set up a World Series first since the designated hitter debuted in 1973. A shining pinch hit moment for a pitcher at the plate. Puckett is up and Tim McCarver right smack on the money with regard to what's going to happen. And Aguilera is going to be the pinch hitter. What about this? Now, you know, this is unbelievable. Top of the 12th, the bases were loaded, two men out, and a pretty good hitting pitcher at the plate. Here comes Aguilera. This pitcher has a 203 lifetime batting average. A single, an error, and a walk have loaded them up. Graves should have been out of the inning long ago. Aguilera hits it into center field for Gant. We're still tied. Three left for the Twins. Go ahead, stranded 10. We'll send Rick Aguilera to the hill. It was getting late. Every Twins player had been used except Morris and Tapani. Kelly was getting desperate. We were probably going to play one more inning with Aguilera on the mound, and uh, then I wasn't going to kill him, and uh, I wasn't going to do that at all. So I was going to just put uh, Dan Gladden out there and let him wing it up there, and, and Aguilera would play the outfield, and we'd go from there. There began with one out in the bottom of the 12th when Justice lined a single in the right. The home team fans began to stir. Cox, too, was running out of options and elected to play it aggressive. Seventh pitcher of the night for the Twins is out on the hill. Runner going. Ball one and a stolen base, and the winning runs it in scoring position. After Olsen walked, Memke, who was almost the goat with his error in the top of the inning, came to the plate defiant, determined to make amends. Yeah. Jimmy Mark. Lemke hits it into left field. Here comes Justice. Save! And Atlanta wins it. Become the big men in this series. And so the Braves had made their mark by winning their first World Series game. And a southern city so used to an early winter found itself in the throes of hysteria.
Game four marked the return of Morris to the mound, looking to extend his success. His counterpart, John Smoltz, who is a boy growing up in Michigan, idolized Morris. And for extra incentive, he had his dad on hand, watching his boy play ball. Hi, Johnny Bay. Hey, oh, thanks, eh? Keep me calm. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Get that first one. But it was the Twins who got the first one in the second inning, as Brian Harper doubled, and with one out, Mike Pagliarulo proved once again that you don't have to hit them hard, just hit them where they ain't. In the short left, Belliard can't get it, and the run is going to be in time, and it's one to nothing, Twins. A little blooper in the left. What a bleeder. What a fungal hit. Just a little fungal hit. Oh, well. That's a cheapie. All right, suck it up, John. Got a cheapie. That's all right, baby. When they score first, we win. Come on now. With Pagliarulo now on second, it was time to put a Dollar Tree on the back burner. This has got to be a thrill, man. Face your hero. Come on, Johnny, get Jack right away. Oh, man, this is great. This is great. Get that Detroit Tiger, babe. Come on. Giddy. This is it, Johnny, baby. Come on out. Yeah! Way to go, baby! All right, let's get that run back. Come on, Briggs. As the game moved into the third, the Atlanta fans grew restless. Come on, hit the ball. So, with two men out, Terry Pendleton responded. Pendleton hits it very well, and it carries out into right center. Tied. But in the top of the fourth, Minnesota mustered a rally of sorts, putting runners on the corners with one out. Runner at third is Shane Bank, reached out a fielder's choice. Pallier Rulo's two for two. One out, the batter Gagney. With the pitcher coming up next, the squeeze situation right here. That was the first thing from my mind, and uh, my, my game plan was just to try to strike him out because the pitcher was coming up next. Greg Gagney was having trouble with the, the slider. Uh, hitting, so uh, we went with the slider and it happened to be low on away, and that was a t real tough pitch to bunt. Squeeze play, and they missed it. They've got Matt. And he's out. The other runner down the second. Yeah! Way to go, Greg. Way to go, Greg. The unsuccessful suicide gave the Braves new life, but they were once again done in by a fundamental mistake in the fifth. With Lonnie Smith on second, and nobody out. Pendleton drills one to deep center. Lonnie Smith is going to hit for third. Nobody out. They're sending him home. A late throw by Knobloch. And out! Harper held the ball. Pendleton ends up at third. That was a terrible base running play by Lonnie Smith. You don't tag up on a ball hit deep over the outfielder's head. You go a third of the way. Well, my first instinct was to go a third of the way to halfway, uh, just in case uh, the ball fell in. Uh, I took a look at the ball as well as Kirby Puck at the center fielder and it appeared that he was going to catch the ball. It looked like Puck was going to catch the ball, and I'm sure that's what Lonnie Smith thought, that he was going to catch the ball. So he went back to tag up, which is a good base running play to get to third base with, with one out. But all of a sudden, the ball just kind of took off and went over Puck's head. And once I saw that he didn't catch it, I tried to turn on whatever speed I had left and, and uh, had hopes of uh, scoring on the play. I knew it was going to be close. I was concentrating, trying to get the ball. And as soon as I got the ball into my glove and, then, and also in my bare hand and, and to hold onto it real tight, I, I looked up and Lonnie Smith was right in my face. And so I knew I had no shot at going under him and there was no chance of going around him. So uh, my only recourse was to try to go through him. He just nailed me, I and mean, it was a, just a perfect hit. I don't particularly like to, to see that type of play, uh, only when it's absolutely necessary. 
When the dust had settled, Pendleton was on third, but the Braves ran into Harper once again. Here comes the runner trying to score. He is out. Pendleton is tagged out on another great play by Brian Harper. What are we doing? That ball was not anywhere. Into the seventh round, where with one out, Ali Rulo looked for the knockout. Strike him out, son. Strike him out. Strike him out, Johnny. Right here. Pull the trigger on it. Pull the trigger on it. Tough pitch, son. You had him, too, baby. Just suck it up now. Suck it up. Walk off. We got it. We're going to come back. Sorry, right, Johnny. Come on, babe. Dig deep, baby. Dig deep. The hope and prophecy of John's father did not look like it would be realized in the bottom of the seventh. For even though the Braves have tipped their hats to a rally, it was Twins reliever Carl Willis who was turning the Atlanta hitters inside out. With two out, Lonnie showed there was still some chop left in the wood. Here's Lonnie hitting one a ton to tie it. Sheer beauty of baseball was almost overwhelming. Game four, the World Series. Game tied, two to two. A rally would cap the night off quite nicely for the Braves. But Guthrie had already retired Olsen. It was up to Lemke once again to provide the heroic. Stepping into the box, I was thinking about getting on base. Uh, first pitch he threw me, I swung at, and uh, it was a good pitch to hit. One deep into left center field. That's big chase at the wall. And up again. He's going to end up at third with one out. I said, I'm going to take a chance here and I'm going to make them throw me out. You know, and then uh, those are the type of things you got to do. I think uh, sometimes you got to let it let it go and, and, and play aggressive. And I felt in that situation, you know, I'll try to capitalize on something. After walking Blouser, Kelly elected to rest his fortunes on bedrock. And now Kelly's going to come out and make the move and bring Bedrosian in. Bedrosian will pitch to either Cabrera or another pinch hitter. Well, now Bedrosian is in the game. Tight spot for the Twins. Bobby Cox made the switch to Jerry Willard, who is the pinch hitter with Mark Lemke at third base, Jeff Blouser at first base, and only one out. This fella has played at Bend, the Peninsula, Reading, Oklahoma, Charleston, Cleveland, Maine, Tacoma, Birmingham, Vancouver, the White Sox, and he's had only 14 at bats this year. Tag 
got the ball in his hand and the glove. He never made contact with the runner with the glove. Another gut-wrenching game at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium and another unlikely hero in Jerry Willard. You couldn't blame the fans for being a bit off kilter as the final game in Atlanta got underway. The Braves called on Tom Glavin to pitch the pivotal fifth game and with a sense of deja vu he found himself once again facing Kevin Tappany who had pitched eight solid innings to win game two. In the early going of this game Tappany and Glavin once again dominated. But in the bottom of the fourth, Gant broke through Tappany's veneer and set the stage for some Southern justice. on first, Lemke had another bout with Klaus. were being done in by the Mighty Mites. There's a base hit in the left by Bellia. And that drives home Lemke. Double for Raphael, and it's 4 nothing in Atlanta. The Twins could sense this one getting out of hand as the Braves scored another in the fifth. Kelly dug deeper into his bullpen in the seventh, calling on David West. But all he did was put a Mr. October postscript on the storied World Series career of Smith. Lonnie hits it high, hits it deep. There she goes. since Reggie Jackson did it back in 1977. Lonnie's third straight home run game spurred the Braves to break out the bats. Another hit. Canada will score. Get to third. Seven to three. In for the play of the plate and a hit by Hunter. And another run for Atlanta. Eight three. Lemke's second triple of the game and his third in the series turned even the neon lights out on the twin. And as the only blowout of the series drew to a close, and Atlanta got what it wanted, a sweet dream that came true. straight in Atlanta was at the end of the series but it wasn't peanuts either they needed but one more to win we intended to sweep that's what we came here to do and that's what we did 
With a theatrical flourish, the Braves were now one win away from the title. But they had to return to the Dome, where the Twins were simply perfect. The Homer Hankies were out in force for Game 6, and the revitalized Twins were out to stop the Braves' momentum. But which Erickson would show up? The 20 game winner during the regular season? Or the somewhat shaky postseason pitcher? And what about Avery? Would he start another scoreless streak? Or was he ready to wilt from the pressure in the inning? Well, in the bottom of the first, Knobloch offered up an indication. Base hit for Knobloch. for 18 in the World Series. Kirby, 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 Kirby. The batter is Kirby Puckett. He's been cold, cold, cold. Three out of 18. That's fair. He's going to score. Puckett for third. Avery got the second out, holding Puckett at third, but somebody was due. Well, of all people, who's up there now for the Twins? Shane Mack. 0 for 15 in the series, 0 for his last two at bats against Toronto in the championship series, so he's 0 for his last 17. There's a hit, two to nothing, Minnesota. The Twins carried that 2 nothing lead into the third, where with one man on, their defense painted one of those memorable World Series pictures that stand the test of time. He corks it to left center and chased by Puckett. He caught it! play by Kirby Puckett watching time the jump but though Kirby was brilliant the Braves were resilient and in the top of the fifth they sought to come back Raphael Belliard opened with a single and with Lonnie Smith at the plate the twins made a rare mistake double play ball maybe yep only one as Hoplock couldn't get the ball out of the glove a smattering of Braves fans then urged Pendleton to make the Twins pay. Bucket chases it to the track. It might go. We're tied. Pendleton's second home run of the series ties it in the fifth. That's what happens when you fail to make the double play. The scale for Pendleton was measured in feet, but the scale for Justice in inches. Here's a smash by Justice. Are the Braves going to take the lead? Foul! Everybody off the Atlanta bench. Justice thought it was a home run, and the right field umpire made the call. No doubt it was far enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was a tough call for Rick Reed, the right field umpire. The Twins eventually reclaimed the lead on Puckett's sacrifice fly, but this wasn't one of the all-time great World Series for nothing. And in the seventh, the Braves got to Erickson. Wimpke began the inning with his ninth hit of the series, and the decibels in the dome decreased. Kelly went to the bullpen, but Erickson had answered any questions with six gutsy innings. Now it was Guthrie's turn to stem the tide. 
but a wild pitch and a walk had opened up a can of worms. Single and a walk in the inning. Lemke down at second. Lonnie Smith at first. One out. One run lead for the Twins in the seventh, and Pendleton, who's had two hits, is up. And it's up to Knobloch. Bases loaded. And an infield hit for Pendleton, his third of the night, loads the bases for the big Atlanta hitter, Ron Gant. Out went Guthrie. In came Willis. The World Series might be on the line right here. The deep short. Tying run. Scores. He crosses the plate to make it 3 3. Now two were out, but a runner stood ominously on third. It was indeed hanky biting time as Justice sought to give Atlanta the lead. It was both a beautiful dream and a tension filled nightmare all wrapped up in one. The new pitcher for Atlanta, Charlie Lee Brandt. This is his second year with the Braves, and this is his first relief appearance. And one of the big guys for the Twins leads it off in the 11th. Kirby Puckett has had a single, a triple, stolen base, run batted in, run scored. He'll be followed by Davis and then back. Into deep left center from Mitchell, and we'll see you tomorrow night.
Somebody's got a storybook, see? There's a book, and it's now it's on page chapter six is over, and now you turn to chapter seven. It's a storybook World Series. What's going to happen tomorrow in game seven, chapter seven? Oh, my God, I can't wait. It's going to be something. Can you imagine this going on like this? Unbelievable. The fabled Game 7 of the World Series and a rematch of the Game 4 started. Here's the starting pitcher for Atlanta, number 29, John Schmoltz. Warming up for the Twins, number 47, Jack Morris. The recognition that this was one of the truly great World Series was not lost on the players who acknowledged from the start that everyone had won. And to nobody's surprise, a taut, nerve-wracking pitching duel commenced. The scoreboard remained barren as the game moved into the fifth. But against Morris, the Braves fired the first shot, starting with the hero of games three and four, Mark Lemke. And another hit for the little guy. That is number 10 for Lemke. It is a guarantee that Belliard will be bunning on the first pitch. Belliard had been quietly exceptional throughout the series. And in a game like this, one run could make all the difference. Play will be the first, and Herbeck takes the throw. Now the Braves want something from their leadoff hitter with Lemke at second and one out. Bonnie Smith is flying to right, and he's walked. He butts. And the play by Pagliarulo, safe. First and third, one out. So Lonnie Smith says to Terry Pendleton, you do it. Of course, it's easier for Pendleton to do it because now there's a runner at third and still only one out. him up for the second out. Shortstop wants it. And has it two out. So Pendleton leaves them. I said it the last time he batted. If the Braves are going to win, Ron's going to have to do something. Braves have left four. Have two on, two up. Then with one pitch, a pair of could have been for the Braves. In the dirt, blocked the runner halfway, and he is safe. He got back. One more look at Mike Pagliarulo, the third baseman. Limpke halfway, and he tries to get back. Look at the right knee of Pagliarulo. He drops down, but Limpke is clearly back in there. Good call. Houston third, two out, three and two. Lonnie Smith will go. Runner going. Strike. Well, I made a good pitch on him in a critical situation with the, with the guy at the plate that I respect a tremendous amount. I threw a pretty good fastball and, and got him froze. And it, was, it was just, you know, sometimes you just have to show your emotions, let them go. And, and I, was, <laughs> I did that at that point. On to the bottom of the sixth, where this time it was a twins' turn. Puckett drew a walk, and after Herbeck flied out to Gant, the spotlight was on Chili. <laughs> With 
With the veteran at the plate, a lot of bad things could happen to Atlanta, but so could one good thing. To Bream, throws to second, gets one, and gets the return. Folks, this game is going to be decided late. And so the stage was set for the incredible eighth inning of the seventh game, perhaps the most nail-biting complete inning in the history of the World Series. It's all pitching here tonight. Jack Morris, John Spoltz, nine hits total. The longest scoreless start of a seventh game in a World Series. Jack Morris takes it into the eighth. Base at the top of the order. Smith, Harry Pendleton, and Ron Gant. That's going to drop, I think it does. And that's the second hit of the night for Lottie on base for the third time. Now, what do you do with Pendleton, Tim? Well, there are a lot of ways you can go. You can bunch, you can hit and run. Or he can play it straight up. Well, they went straight up and got two quick strikes on Pendleton, who then stayed alive by the skin of the ball. The ball is in the dirt, says the third base umpire, Terry Tata. And Pendleton is still alive on the foul tip. So he foul tipped it, then the ball went in the dirt, and then it skipped into Harper's mitt. With another swing at his disposal, Pendleton sought to make the most of it. Pendleton in the left center field. That ball is down and a bad. Well, it's off the wall. Lonnie Smith is held up at third, and he didn't do very good base running. Well, that's what we were told. But it's possible that Smith simply lost the ball. It was a hit and run. Or maybe he fell for the decoy by Knobloch and Gagne at second. The fact was, he didn't get thrown out at home. And with runners on second and third with nobody out, you had to think that somebody, anybody, would get him across the plate. And we still have no score, but it's second and third and nobody out. The infield comes in now as Ron Gant comes up. Little roller, and they'll get an out without a run score. They got Gant again. He's 0 for 4. With one out now. Morris had to be wondering if Kelly was going to leave him in the game. At first, uh, Brian Harper came to the mound, and I looked at Brian and said, he can't be taking me out right now. Kenny says, no, no, I don't think so. And when TK came out, he smiled, which he's done several times when he's taken me out. And I just stood there like, I'm going to kill you if you take me out. <laughs> and all he did was come up to me and say, um, I think we should walk this guy. He says, what do you think? I said, you're the boss. Well, the boss called the shot and elected to put justice on first and pitch to a man with but three hits in the series, Sid Bream. And the play is to hold. Out there. Out there. It was the biggest play of the series by far. But how could the bottom of the eighth ever top the top? Well, it began when pinch hitter Randy Bush opened the inning against Smoke.
Bush had done his job, and now Al Newman came on the run. Gladden popped out after failing to sacrifice, so with one man out, the pressure returned to Knobloch. Left is young Atlanta hurler. Aaron Smoltz. Runner going. Base hit. First and third, one out. And who's up? Lockett. First and third with one out, and Stanton came in for Smoltz, who had once again outdone himself. Well, wasn't this young man terrific? He took the game scoreless into the eighth inning. Pitched seven and a third. No run, six hits, struck out four. Hit one, walked one. And gives way to Mike Stanton. The Braves wanted nothing to do with Puckett. You talk about brassy for Bobby Cox. I'm telling you, this takes a lot of guts right here. Bobby probably considers one run... You know, that's going to open the floodgate. One, one run's going to win it. So he's playing it like the bottom of the ninth instead of the bottom of the eighth. Al Newman, the runner at third. And Chuck Knobloch down at second, and they walk Kirby Puckett. Ken Herbeck has struck out three times against Mike Stanton. And that's why Herbeck doesn't like to face Stanton, but here he is facing him important situation in the series. And a line drive and a double play. Sends us into the ninth inning scoreless. So the Braves catch a break. An amazing inning of World Series baseball had come to a close. And after the Braves went one, two, three in the ninth, the Twins began their half with a Chili Davis single and a bunt hit by Harper. It was on the bunt that Stanton who pitched so admirably throughout the series, was injured. And Pena was called on to get the Braves out of a most difficult situation. Here's a good center. Lead off single by Chili Davis. One single by Brian Harper. Nobody out in the Twins game. Let's see how Shane Mack plays it with two on. One would think these teams had used up their quota of double plays. One would think. And a ground ball to Lefty. They get one. And a double play. The runner ends up at third with two out. A strikeout by Paul Sorrento into the inning. And for the first time in World Series history, three games had gone into extra innings. Once again, Morris stymied the Braves in the top half. The bottom half commenced. We're piling up some records, and here we are, scoreless in the bottom of the tenth with Glad and the batter against Pena. Broken bat, fly ball is going to drop. He's trying. Save. A broken bat looper and a decision by Gladden right out of the box had put him on second. Now the strategy was to get him to third. What followed? was perhaps the most underrated play of the series, performed to perfection by Knobloch, the rookie. Knobloch bunts, Pendleton goes to first. Lemke tips the four. There is the winner at third base, one out. The Braves then walk Puckett, and somewhat surprisingly, the slump ridden Herbeck to load the bases and set up the fourth. On came Gene Larkin, an unlikely hero. Larkin is the pinch hitter with the bases loaded and one out. The Minnesota bench hoping to get this winning run across here in the tenth. It's carried by Dan Gladden the third. Pena in a jam. The Twins are going to win the World Series. The Twins have won it. It's a base hit. It's a 1-0 10-inning victory.
for Morris, the most valuable player award and richly deserved. For both the Minnesota Twins and the Atlanta Braves, the end to a glorious one-year journey from last place to a World Series that was simply the best. We knew it was one in a million. It was such a long shot. But somehow we got here together. And who knows what will happen? Anything can happen.